this is Dexter from A2K. And thank you for joining us on today's webinar, Dynamo Workflows You Need for Design Efficiency. So technical consultant Ben Burns will be presenting for us today. So we're all about fostering innovation through consulting and training. A2K Technologies plays a vital role in helping infrastructure, building, mining, construction, architecture, and manufacturing industries reach their full potential by delivering complete technology solutions and support services, such as education, consulting, and IT managed services. We're working with visionaries to shape the future of design and in turn, enable them through innovation to minimize risks, improve productivities, and achieve excellence. ATK Technologies is considered the business partner of choice and trusted advisor by embedders and clients. We partner with major software and hardware vendors to meet our clients' technology needs. We strive to exceed client expectations by understanding th their challenges and delivering solutions through experience and innovation. We work with clients and companies of any size nationally and abroad. I'll pass it on to you, Ben. Thank you, I'll unmute. Uh, yes, uh, just a little bit about the Zoom. Uh, so feel free to put any questions into the Q&A. Uh, we will have a Q&A uh, session towards the end. Uh, and I will review some questions and uh, go through that. So feel free to use the chat or the Q&A function in Zoom. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm the structural technical lead at A2K. Uh, I do a lot of business workflow transformation and software implementation. I have been in the industry for over 25 years in the structural and consulting sector, uh, doing a lot of industrial units, uh, commercial premises, uh, infrastructure, including bridges and the like, uh, some high des density residential and providing a design and construction documentation. I have been using Revit since about 2010 and I have a structural engineering associate diploma. Uh, I do talks in the industry and am a big um, advocate for automation. So uh, particularly with Dynamo, and a lot of things that you can and are doing like day to day are uh, really about speeding those processes up and trying to automate it. Uh, just a little bit about the rough agenda for today. So uh, there are some scripts that we do have for download for future use. If you do check the, the uh, chat window, they have been provided there. There are a couple of Excel links accompanying them. Uh, they're only small Excel, just showing some sheets and levels. Uh, we can't obviously show a heap of scripts in the time we have together. So they are a couple of simple scripts that you will find uh, useful that you will be able to use immediately today in your projects. So we are going to concentrate on the uh, create levels when I show the live demonstration. And we'll also have some uh, creating some sheets as well. So uh, they are in the chat window. So uh, please uh, download. Uh, the expectation isn't really to follow along, uh, but you can use them for future use. Uh, our rough agenda. So we are going to introduce Dynamo as well. So there will be a few people that haven't used it. So um, I know that we've probably got a very wide range of people. So some people that have, haven't used it, don't know what it is, don't know what it does. Some people that are creating scripts that are probably uh, looking forward to the point where I go, here are all my scripts and help yourselves. Uh, so that's at the end and um, don't get too excited. I am only sharing out two scripts. Uh, we can provide you with more scripts and help you develop your own scripts for your company. Uh, please reach out to your A2K representative or just email info at a2ktechnologies.com.au and we will try and help you out. Uh, so our rough agenda, we will go through what is Dynamo, why and when to use Dynamo. So some people, uh, there are points where Dynamo isn't the best help, but generally it is. So uh, there's why and when to use it. Uh, we'll just go a little bit through the interface as well. So I'm not really going, I will show the interface and go through what parts there are of it and just to introduce it, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Show nodes then show how to really about the Dynamo bird's nest and how to organize your data. And then I will focus on some Dynamo scripts for efficiency. Uh, I will give a live demonstration of a couple of those scripts and then do a bit of a Q and A at the end. So what is Dynamo? So Dynamo is a visual programming tool that works with Revit. 
Uh, it extends the power of Revit by actually accessing the Revit API in a more accessible manner. Uh, instead of coding, you use nodes to manipulate all those elements within Revit. So it's a visual coding. It's uh, instead of, I'm sure we've all seen those codes where it's all just lines and lines of text. This is a visual um, coding program. So it's a lot more easy, a bit more intuitive to pick up. Uh, why should we use it? Uh, for BIM management, uh, importing or exporting data using Excel. Uh, external model adoption, so you can actually use Dynamo to bring in certain parts of a model uh, that you have from an external client or whatever, and then manipulate those. Uh, computational design. So when you're doing design using either Rhino or Grasshopper and the like, uh, you use Dynamo to bring that data into Revit. Uh, construction documentation automation. So that is what we we're really going to look and focus on today. Um, just showing you uh, a couple of scripts that will really help with that uh, documentation and trying to automate some of those processes. Uh, installing Dynamo. So I won't really push too much onto this. It does automatically install since about Revit 2020. So uh, nowadays it should automatically be installed. There, you can also do a standalone um, Dynamo Studio, which won't be connected to Revit or you can install it through Dynamo. Uh, this is the rough interface. So when you open it up, this is what you get. Uh, we have menu tabs at the top. Uh, we've got new custom and open nodes. So if you wanna start a new uh, script, uh, start a new custom node or open a script. Uh, we do have the sort of recent ones there as well, which you've been working on. There are some forums and websites. So these are quite valuable. Uh, it is an open source sort of software. So everyone does uh, contribute and uh, put things in. There's like a, a search forum, uh, plenty of websites where you can actually go in and uh, do some tutorials, etc. cetera. Uh, there are some reference, learning references as well, which contains your primer. Uh, and videos as well, where you can sort of go through some examples. Uh, there is a community where people do put up uh, scripts for people to use. And if you find bugs as well, you can get help through there, uh, which is that and the uh, all those scripts. So you can see uh, where people have put in through the for the bugs as well. Uh, there are some samples which you will get. So uh, there are some out of the box samples. So they're good ones to generally just have a play with and just, just sort of get a bit of an idea about how Dynamo works. Uh, this is the basic interface. So you, again, like all software, it does have the menu tabs at the top where everything is generally contained. Uh, you do have a toolbar. We've also got the node library. Now this node library can be important. It does come preset with a lot of different nodes. Uh, occasionally you will need to download packages where people have actually created nodes that they find useful. Uh, generally it's a good idea to, um, if you do need a package uh, to let people know and they will have to download a package, which are optional. Uh, that's your pack package manager down the bottom there and you have your workspace. Uh, you've got a caption where you can take images of it to sort of share on those forums or whatever and get feedback on your scripts where you can take an image of it. And you also can change uh, a 3D preview to a graph view, etc. cetera. Uh, a couple of navigation just in and out. You can just use your mouse as well. Um, the execution bar is quite important. So uh, generally, sometimes that is, well, generally it's set to automatic. Um, I prefer to always have that as a manual execution so that I can run the script when I choose to rather than having it run automatically. So uh, one of the important things is Dynamo nodes. So the Dynamo script is made up of nodes which are then joined together with connectors to create a definition or Dynamo graph. Again, I'm not really going to go into how to do Dynamo today. Um, 
you know, we're hoping only go for sort of 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, to try and teach Dynamo in 40 minutes would be a big ask. Uh, you do get single nodes and it runs from left to right. So you can sort of run things back, but it's always a good idea to make sure you do run it from left to right. And they go through the um, connectors from the input nodes. And this is now an input here. And then you'll get the output where that feeds to another node to continue the full script. Uh, there are some node states to be aware of. So you do have one which is an active box. So you can see there it's uh, dark at the top and it's uh, currently active. You do have an inactive one where it goes gray. Uh, the red one is obviously an error. So that is where something's going wrong. Uh, the import hasn't come through. Uh, something's something's uh, not calculating correctly. Uh, you can freeze nodes. So if you freeze a node that will uh, put it in a box and dash it, uh, that would be something that you'd use a lot if you were running automatic execution where you could uh, freeze one and then the script would stop at that point and then you can unfreeze it and it will continue. Uh, I do prefer to, I don't really freeze much stuff off. I prefer to use that manual execution. Uh, it's also a good idea to always test your scripts as well. So always make sure that you um, create a backup, uh, test the script before you um, sort of, when you're creating the scripts. Uh, we have a selected one here. So once you select it, you can see uh, the points that it's going to get up and it sort of goes blue uh, where you've selected it and the nodes will become active as such. Uh, you do have one with a warning. So this is one you'll probably see quite commonly. This is where the uh, input hasn't really come across well. So you can see there, uh, they've tried to take a number and funnily enough, the number is actually a color. And you can see that they've tried to break that into X, Y, Zs and it's going, well, this is not the input that I expected. Uh, and then you have it with the background preview off where you've just sort of, um, turned it off as such. Uh, this is where the node and this is uh, generally where you look at it in the node menu on the left. This is where it will give you a description of what it's going to do. Uh, it gives you a little icon of what it is. It tells you what it's expecting as the input and it will tell you also what the output is. So if you do hover over a node, that preview will appear and it'll provide you with just that you know, sort of brief um, description of what it's going to do and what you're expecting. So uh, it does take a bit of time. And one of the big issues with Dynamo is just finding that right node to do what you want. Uh, sometimes it can even be so simple as creating a surface or creates surfaces if you're trying to create one or two. And just using that wrong node uh, will sort of cause you dramas. So it's a um, to sort of try and always find that correct node, uh, you'll you'll lose a lot of time. Yeah, if, and uh, if you're trying to uh, do the wrong thing, so you can see where it's it actually wants cross sections. So on a lot of the items, uh, it is really looking for plurals, etc. So you know if you need to provide multiple sections or not. Uh, there are three types of main descriptors in Dynamo. Uh, you have the create nodes where it will actually create something. Uh, you have your action nodes where it will actually like do something. And then you have your query nodes where you're actually getting the information out. Uh, this is how a typical Dynamo graph works. So you start from your input, you manipulate the data and then you get an output. That looks quite simple. In reality, it is more like what you see here. You get an, one input, then you manipulate that information in a lot of different ways, going back and forth and around the corner, and eventually you will get to an output. So uh, you do need to do a lot of back and forth with information. Uh, you might get the list incorrect or the list, you may want item two on the list, so then you need to sort the list, etc. 
Uh, but this is the basic way it works from one input to then the manipulation to then the output. Uh, and this is what you get. Now, this is an overwhelming mess. And you can see that there's node and string lines going everywhere. And it's uh, quite confusing and no one really knows what's happening. So this is why it's very important to sort of break this down. And there's a great system that uh, has a link here. So I will put that in the chat as well. Uh, I will put that in the chat. Uh, there is a link where someone actually has developed a coloring system to show you what is required as an input, what's going to Revit, what's just monitoring, uh, annotation, work in progress, etc. cetera. Um, there's nothing to really say this system's the perfect way to deal with it. Uh, it's on you to sort of develop your own system, but at least uh, just by looking at it, you can sort of say, well, there's my controls and here is where I need to input my information. So you can really get that stuff uh, straight off. So you know that this is where you need to put all the info and this is where it's going to rev it. Uh, you will also have a bit of annotation here. It's always a good idea to maybe put up um, just a bit of information about the script. So uh, put in what, what kind of inputs they're going to need to put in. So they can always look here and see what inputs they need. Uh, you may also tell them what packages they will need to download to run the script. Uh, please note that the scripts that I've sent through in the chat, they will not require any packages. So uh, they don't require Python or anything. So they will just be free to use without uh, downloading anything extra. And this is a more logical script set out properly. So you can see here we have um, the information. We've also got just a couple of inputs or just even one input. And then it's processing. And then we have our two Revit output. Uh, so a couple of efficiency scripts that I really want to highlight, and this is about today where we're really um, a couple of scripts that I want to mention that are quite useful. Uh, we're going to the ones I'm going to show live because obviously we don't want to be going for uh, three hours. So the ones I'm going to show and the ones that are in the chat is to create floor levels from Excel and also to create sheets. Now, there are a couple of other efficiencies that are great use of Dynamo. So one is you can automatically dimension the grid lines. You can place a legend on multiple sheets. And this is where Dynamo scripting really helps. So if you have um, a massive project of say 500 plus sheets and you need to place a legend on 20 of them, uh, you can see that that's quite a time consuming process. So if you do uh, have, have that script where you can place a legend on multiple sheets, you can uh, use Excel or whatever to uh, specify those sheets and then it will place those legends on them. Uh, we can export instance and type parameters values to Excel. Now this is quite useful for almost um, pushing back that information back to an engineer for checking. So you can print out and you can have all your wall um, instance parameters and type parameters. Uh, you can put that out in an Excel sheet. Uh, the engineer can then review it. And then they will obviously say, uh, well, we've got 200 concrete walls. Those walls are meant to be 250, et cetera. And you can make those changes as well. So if you do see script uh, number seven that I've got noted there, it is a uh, change that family type by name. So that's where you, if you did have that, um, change you wanted to make through, you could push that back through. Uh, creating sheets, uh, that's one we're going to show. That's quite valuable where you can quickly create 50 sheets to then um, have the views um, put on them. Uh, you can batch upgrade Revit families. Now this is a great script where um, every year Revit will update and that will automatically, if you change that, you can point it to your Revit library and it will open up basically each of those families, save them as the latest version so that then uh, your Revit will work nice and smooth. You won't have to upgrade each family, it will batch upgrade it. 
Uh, you can change the family type by name. So if you uh, change a connection, something like that, you do change a family you're using, change the type of a super T, et cetera. You can uh, change all those families at once throughout the project. Uh, even some simple ones like text, changing it from upper to lower case, et cetera. Uh, just doing some simple changes like that, maybe adding a um, prefix or a suffix to a sheet name. Uh, they're quite valuable through there. Uh, we do have scripts where we create work sets. So a lot of those people that are using work shared projects where we can create uh, work sets straight away. And then to almost run with that, you can place elements on particular work sets and place them by categories. So we'll pick up all your structural framing and it will put that on a structural work set. Uh, some of these scripts can be run together as well. So where we have um, creating that floor level from Excel, we're then creating the sheets. We can then create the, those views that have been created. We could then place them on the sheets and you could run that as quite a long uh, Dynamo script. I prefer to break them into the smaller scripts uh, just so I can see what's happening a bit clearer, et cetera. So um, I have made ones which are very long, but I do prefer to run them quite smallly and I'll run small scripts and then at least just have them noted to that one follows that one and then run those. Uh, we're now going to get into a bit of a live demonstration. So I'm going to open up Revit 2021, which I have open here. Uh, just to show you that this isn't pre-prepared or anything, I am going to start a new model. I'm just going to start it with the structural template. Oh, I'll use the construction one. It uh, doesn't really matter. As we know, that just sets up those um, families and what it has in here. I can see that I have a couple of floor plans. I'm just going to, just, just for the exercise so I can run it a bit smoother, I'm going to delete level one. And I'm also going to delete the existing sheet that I have. Now, Dynamo from... Uh, 2020 has been installed automatically. It is under the Manage tab and we can find Dynamo here. Uh, I will explain about the player a lot a bit later. Uh, the player is where you can host scripts and it really doesn't take you into that scripting as such. You can just change the input and run it. So that is a lot easier to use for people that aren't familiar with Dynamo. Uh, I am going to open Dynamo. Uh, the first script I'm going to do is creating levels. Uh, my Dynamo is here and this is the interface that it comes up with. So uh, my two scripts are here. They are in my recent. I have uh, create levels and create sheets. And I'm going to use the create levels script. I can open it just from here. And this is my script. Just by rolling in and out, I can see the, the different script. Now, just to show again, I'm not really going to do a Dynamo tutorial, but uh, I, I can use my search here to find different scripts. I can grab like a basic import, for instance. And once I select it, you'll see that that puts that node on there. I could then almost uh, make a code block as well if I did want to call it an item or something and have a code block here, uh, which is pretty much the same as an input. So I'll get rid of the input. Uh, I can then use a few uh, different selection Revit scripts, uh, bring on another one of these, and you can see just to connect them, uh, code blocks just for code. And then that will give me the output, which I can then select and take that through to the next node. Uh, if I do want to delete it or get rid of it, I can just pick up that um, sort of the end of it and just drag it off into empty space, which will disconnect the node. Uh, so that's um, a very simple explanation of um, how to place nodes. Now, uh, this one's, we can see again that it's running from left to right. Uh, it has some inputs. Uh, so what it's looking for is a file. So the file that we're using, it is an Excel file. I do have it um, in my folder. Uh, I'm just going to open up my level and plans Excel. 
Now, this is where I can manipulate um, how many levels I want um, at what spacing I want them to be. So I can simply, um, I've not renamed it as levels because that's what it's looking for in the tab in Excel. Uh, I can put in um, any number of levels I want and change them just to show how it works uh, sort of live. I will create, um, uh, I will make sure I can edit it. It's probably trick number one. Uh, I'll just make sure I've got another level there, just so you can see I've put one in. Uh, maybe I'll make this one at sort of 42 meters. Uh, I will now close that script and save it. And now I need to point this Dynamo to it. So it's looking for that file path. Uh, you can see here I've sort of, um, you know, do what I do, do what I say, not what I do. Uh, you can see that I haven't colored these nodes. Um, yes, I probably should uh, and have this as an input node uh, just to make it clear to um, where you need to put the input. Uh, it's also a good idea in this top corner to have that what information you um, want to put in and also uh, what it is expecting. Uh, I have that done that on the next uh, script, so I will show that a bit further. Uh, so browse, I'm going to point that to my levels and plans and open. And uh, that's now got it. Now you can see um, that I do have this on manual so it won't run it automatically. Uh, you can see at the moment that I only have uh, two floor plans, um, but probably doesn't really show it to the full degree. I can still open and access, like I can still access Revit at the same time. So if I do go to an elevation, you will see that I've got um, level one. Uh, I should have deleted the level, which I'll do now anyway. So I can uh, manip still manipulate Revit while I'm inside the script, which sits on top of it. So I've just deleted that level one because that script's got a level one and it will override it. So, um, yep. Uh, so you can see I've only got that one level zero in there. So now I will run the script. Uh, it's picked up my Excel and you can see that it has created my 10 levels and it has also um, put them in. So you can see that level one, I level 10, I just added in. Uh, so you can see how that is a lot quicker than um, having to copy them up and array those and etc. So I've very quickly created those sheets, I uh, created those levels, and then I've created the appropriate floor plans as well. Uh, I have done scripts where you can actually create the structural plans and uh, different plans as well. So you could create the ceiling plan, make sure you create different plans, uh, create like MEP plans, etc. cetera. So uh, you can see how that has created all those plans uh, through that script. So um, it's created them, it's created a floor plan by the level and a floor plan view and a ceiling plan and a ceiling plan view and a structural plan. Uh, you can also add these and make MEP plans, etc. So you can see how that's automatically done a lot of that work for us, a lot of that project set up. And that's, that's one of the big, um, big things with Dynamo, you can actually get a project set up. If you had a 50 story building, you can actually set it up, set up all your sheets um, in half an hour you know, or no more than half an hour. Uh, I'm now going to run another script. So this is the second script I've got in there. So if I do just go to file and open, uh, I don't need to save my changes and I can open my create sheets one. Uh, these have been sent through and as you've seen, you can run them tomorrow on your next project. So I've opened this one. Uh, this one I have color coded, so you can see I've sort of done it a little bit better and a bit more um, efficiently. And it's actually good because you've got uh, a bit of information here uh, when I created the script, uh, what version of Dynamo it was um, sort of built on. Uh, you've also got the user interface. So this is very important and it makes it easy to use for people. So we've got the file location and that's it's add the file location, the Excel file, uh, string update what the Excel tab should read. So you can see it's actually picking up here what 
uh, sheet name. And it, funnily enough, uh, sheet name is the tab in Excel to read from. It's actually drawing sheets. So um, I should probably change that text in there, but um, yeah, we will let it go. Uh, that won't change anything. It's obviously just, these are notes to basically the user to just tell them how it's working. Uh, so we'll open up that Excel sheet as well. I'll probably make sure I go to the right path and um, get it. Uh, so I have sheets here. And again, um, I'll just, I'll leave the view name in. I, to be honest, I don't think I, well, I don't need this column here. I could delete that. Uh, that's that's actually being used in a, another script I have where it's actually getting the view name to then place that on the appropriate sheet. Uh, I've called that drawing sheets, as you can see. Um, going back to the script, I should have probably called it sheet name, but I've used drawing sheets. As long as this matches, this is just text. This is actually the string that it's looking for of that sheet name. Uh, you can see I've got uh, just sheet one, two, three, four, five, six, and six sheet. Uh, just to show again how it's live and how it works, I'll put a seventh sheet in there and just call it, um, yep, seventh sheet. I'll leave this one blank. As I said, that's not uh, needed for this script. Uh, we'll close this script. And uh, I'll probably just double check and make sure it's saved, which it doesn't look like it did. I should have hit save. So again, I'll just hurriedly put in that seventh sheet, S7. I can drag it down to make sure I get that exact uh, syntax and call this the seventh sheet and file and save and close. And now if I look at that preview, it should show me the seventh sheet. Uh, again, I do need to make sure I browse to that. So I come in here, browse to that sheet. And open. So it's browsing that sheet. Uh, again, I probably just need to go through here. I do need to select one view and I also need to select the title block to be used. So um, the string's right. So update what the Excel tab should be read. It's the um, drawing sheets. Uh, go across to my family types. So again, you can see another purple tab where it's waiting for input. Go in through the family types and actually give it the correct uh, family that I'm looking for. So that is the title block A1 metric. So that will use that title block to create those sheets. Um, I'm just going to put one view on just to make sure um, there's only one view in the view list. Uh, I can put multiple sheets in here. So I'm just going to pick that one view of just level one and get that in just for this example. Uh, it will only place the one, the one sheet on it. I could, um, uh, to do a script for that, it's, it's a bit more complex, which I do have, but uh, yep. And uh, let's run the script again, just to show how it works. I'm, you will see at the moment that I have no sheets in here. As soon as I run that sheet, run that script. It's reading them. And it has, uh, you do always hold your breath for a second as you probably heard. Uh, if I do look at my sheets now, I will see that I have all those sheets in there. So I've very quickly created all my structural plans, my floor plans, my ceiling plans. Uh, I have created the sheets. Uh, the first one actually does have a view on it. Uh, there is another script where you can place um, all those plans on the appropriate sheets, etc. But that's just showing a bit of the power of Dynamo and how well it works, how clearly it works. Um, yeah, and it can save you a lot of time. So I'll just go back to my PowerPoint for a bit now um, and just, just re-emphasize that the, some of these ones here for efficiency are great to use. Uh, I will also, I'll just grab, because I was on um, that website before where someone had that article about the colors of the different scripts, etc. So I will also put that in the chat as well. 
uh, for, if anyone wants to uh, grab that. So I'll just put it to um, everyone that uh, script, uh, that um, location of those uh, standards, which has been put up on the um, Dynamo website as, as a bit of a, not a Bible as such, but just as a good um, uh, process to use uh, the colors and how that works. Uh, so there's a lot of further scripts. Uh, I have only given out the two. Uh, please, please reach out to me. Uh, do uh, send a email through if you choose to. So uh, we will open up some questions. I'll check the Q and A if anyone's got any. Uh, please raise your hand as well if you need to. And uh, please, please reach out through info at a2ktechnologies.com.au for further scripts. Uh, they are in the chat as well. Those two with the appropriate. Uh, sheet ones and you can use them today uh, i will give out a bit of the disclaimer that please uh save your work um you know we take no responsibility if uh you run the script and it, it damages your project uh please make sure you make a copy of your project before you do run it um yeah just that uh typical disclaimer so that i don't get uh 50 emails um asking everyone to fix up their projects uh so do please reach out uh contact us via email or reach out to your uh, BDM and we can help you with scripting and those efficiency gains that uh, it would be great for your company and your workflows. Uh, there are no questions. If anyone's got any questions, I'm happy to take any. Uh, yep, so if you do just look in the chat, are there, okay, there are some questions coming in. Uh, yeah, if you do just look in the chat, um, I don't think I can share that. Whoops, I'm actually showing the wrong screen. Who would have thought? Apologies for that. Uh, so please email if you if you do. Uh, we can send those links through as well. Uh, they are in the chat. So if you do just look at your chat window, you will see um, they are um, on our Salesforce site. So I do have links to both the Excel sheets. Uh, which are pretty simple, but just uh, one thing always people trip up on, they, they do trip up on the uh, naming of that tab. So uh, I have made sure I put those Excel sheets through there. So just to make it easier for people. Um, and you've got the two Dynamo scripts, which are create levels and uh, that it is in the um, chat. I will put it back through again now. Um, so it's just in that chat where I also put that link through and um, yeah, if, if you're using the web viewer, you should be able to get to the chat. But um, maybe if I uh, type the answer and I'll put it into the into the um, Q and A, uh, hopefully you can get it through there. Uh, oh, there you go. Thank you. I probably did that just before you uh, send it send it through. Uh, are there ways scripts can be used with Australian Standard Pipe Framework? Uh, yes, well, that's obviously quite a specific question. <laughs> so uh, with the Australian Standards Piping requirements for plumbing, uh, yes, we can uh, do things like turning lines into pipes and placing a particular family on it. So there will be a way to do it. Um, it's all a question of, um, as you know, with Revit, it's, um, you know, the families is everything. So if you have the correct Australian Standard Piping fa families, uh, you can then utilize them in scripts. Uh, again, um, I could probably have a look at it. If you do uh, email through to that um, or speak to your BDM, we can um, do that. Uh, do I think it's worth learning Pon Dynamo? Uh, Python, in attempting to learn Dynamo for the last year. Yeah. So, um, yes, it, uh, it's always helpful to learn anything. So, so um I, it, it is worthwhile trying to learn, but um, to be honest, I, I don't think you really need to learn Python per se. Um, it's, it's a good idea to know how to run it and you can sort of find there's a multitude of scripts out there. So um, uh, yeah, it's to learn learning Python, like it, it is a coding language and it's pretty full on. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a draftsman by trade and by heart. So um, I do start to get the cold sweats when I uh, start working with Python. Uh, I much prefer to uh, draw lines and I'm sort of where, where have all my lines gone? It's all just coding. Um, 
you know, you're, you're probably better off learning <laughs> learning Revit inside out and uh, making sure you're comfortable with Dynamo. I probably think you get a fair bit more out of that than uh, actually coding language. But um, um, I, I do instruct a lot of classes, so there is never any harm in learning as much as you can. Uh, someone's asking a, a script, depending on which version you're working. Uh, those two will work uh, regardless of which Dynamo, uh, which Revit version you're using. Um, of course, there have been some um, improvements in Revit and the way some things work, but generally the whole, um, the fundamentals of Revit are still there. So um, it doesn't matter which one you're on. Obviously, if you're trying to do something using a uh, command or something that exists in a new version of Revit and doesn't use work in the old one. Um, you may have issues, but generally I find that um, Dynamo is pretty, pretty good and uh, works. It's, it's, it's sort of a different, it's not actually as much as it's like the Dynamo is a separate package on top of um of Revit, so uh, uh, yeah, it's more the version of uh, Dynamo. Some Dynamo scripts are newer and uh, won't work on old versions of Dynamo. Um, Dynamo, again, is like open source, so it does have a lot of updates, uh, but if you just get the latest update, everything generally works pretty well. Uh, there you go. I think I've answered um, all the questions. Uh, if there's no more, uh, I do wanna thank you all for your time. Uh, please reach out. I know that there was a few people there. Um, I can't speak to everyone individually. Uh, do, do put through your questions uh, through the email or whatever. Please reach out to A2K and uh, hopefully I can meet you around the traps and help you out with some of your Dynamo workflows. Yep. Uh, yeah, someone's asking a question there about... Uh, just uh, the battle is, uh, as we know, yep, figuring out what node to use. Uh, is there a resource that breaks the nodes down? Uh, well, yes and no. So you do have the little, um, like, I, like I showed, I know I didn't show it in Dynamo, but you do have that little icon where you can get the preview and see what it wants. Um, there are a few sort of website, again, not sort of doing myself out of work, but there, there are a few... Um, of those Dynamo websites out there where they will actually tell you um, sort of here are my favorite nodes. Here are ones that, oh, are you aware of this node? Uh, you can make your own nodes. Uh, it's getting a bit next level though. So, um, yep. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks for everyone for your time. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I did cut it down to about 45 minutes. So uh, I'm aware of everyone's lunch breaks or time and uh, hopefully you've all enjoyed that. And I hope to see you on future sessions. Thank you.